Hey folks, I'm Josh Gaughan, tool repair and maintenance man here at the William T. Spader Company, a comprehensive mechanical contractor on the shores of the Great Lake Erie. Today, a treat especial. We're going to make a campfire. I'm just kidding. We're not going to make a campfire at all. Uh, we're here to talk about... <laughs> We're here to talk about the marketing manager doing the bee dance because there's a bee following her. Today we're here to talk about fire extinguishers. So yes, we will light something on fire, but first we have to talk about the tools we use to extinguish the fire. Fire extinguishers were invented in, well, probably in ancient times. It was probably a coconut hollowed out and you'd scoop water out, you know, run or a bucket if they had those. But in 1723, a chemist by the name of some guy, I can't remember his name, invented a fire extinguisher that used gunpowder to propel water, if that's not the most ridiculous thing. But apparently it led us to here. This fire extinguisher, this one right here, here it is. This fire extinguisher was last inspected in 1970, and it consists of baking soda and water solution with sulfuric acid. Believe it or not, it's true. All the instructions are printed right on the front, and you would tip it over and use the pressure from the column of fluid inside to extinguish the fire. And I don't want to tip it over because what if there's something in it? That wouldn't be safe. If you've ever looked at fire extinguishers, they're usually rated for different classes. Most common is an ABC. Sometimes you might find a K for your kitchen. Class A is usually very common fires like this, wood, paper, cardboard. Uh, class B is oils and gases. And class C would be electrical fires that involve electricity, like if your television caught on fire because you were watching the extreme channel. Uh, and it might be so extreme that you're, you're, the tube just goes right up in smoke. Class A, B, and C fire extinguisher would cover all of those. The most common that we keep here at the William T. Spader Company is also a class A, B, C fire extinguisher that uses a special powder. So while you've got your fire going and you're just about to panic but then you remember ah I know what to do I've got my shiny red fire extinguisher and I'm gonna follow the rules on how to put this out and I don't have time to read the front so I'm gonna pass pass means pull the pin aim the nozzle so you just want to step back eight feet from your fire and aim at the base because you don't want to aim the, the nozzle at the fire. I mean, you want to put out the fire, but really what you want to do is you want to put out the fuel. S is squeeze the handle, of course, and sweep side to side. Just in case when you're, when, if you spray in one spot, you know, you maybe you, like a squirt gun, you get one spot wet, you want to soak the whole thing. So you get it, you get it moving back and forth. Sweep. So we're going to build a fire, maybe two fires, and we're going to get our friend Holly from the inner office, the inner sanctum of the William T. Spader Company, the hub, the hive. We're going to bring her out and she and I are going to put out a fire. So, Holly, have you ever had to use a fire extinguisher to put out a fire? I have not. That's a great thing. That means good thing. That means you're doing your job. Yeah. <laughs> so you know that the instructions on an, are right on the front. Yes. And you know about pass, which is pull the pin. Uh, you aim at the base of the fire. Uh, S is is, is uh, squeeze. Squeeze. See, <laughs> she knows. I was testing you. And and the last S is sweep. Yep. Right. Okay. Good. See, she's checking me now. 
So I'll give you the fire extinguisher and then we'll get ourselves a blazing inferno and we'll put it out. I don't know, whenever. How much fire do we need? Yeah, you promised oh, the yeah. people a blazing oh. inferno. Okay. How's that? It'll pass. Okay. <laughs> Ready? Oh, blazing inferno. Blazing inferno. <laughs> what do we do? Well, we've got to pull the pin. Okay. Come on, Holly, it's an emergency. <laughs> because most fire, you'd be very under pressure. Beautifully done. Blazing inferno extinguished. <laughs> Ah. Wow, that stinks. It's that simple, folks. Next, let's simulate a real office fire and we'll see what happens. I went stop by Holly's office earlier and we emptied her trash can of real office papers and goods and we'll set it on fire and we'll put it out. And because I can't go anywhere without trying to leave my mark, uh, I've got some oil soaked rags I wanted to stuff in here as kind of maybe we are a plumbing company and, and manufacturing. So it's not uncommon for these to, to wind up in a, in a trash can and maybe a little bit of, of an accelerant. After I spoke with uh, Holly, our safety compliance specialist, we decided we would bring this bucket out so we could smother the fire if we had to. So we've got our safety back up. Is that in compliance? I think so. I think so too. Okay. And I've got my flame retardant coat and my hot gloves if anything goes wrong. Well, are we letting it cook? We've got ourselves an office fire uh, and you've got the fire extinguisher. We should probably step back, right? I we should probably put it out. We should, because uh, if you don't do anything, I'm going to start to panic. <laughs> So there you have it, folks. Our fire is pretty much out. We've got our safety compliance specialist, Holly, here. We're going to put the last finishing touches on that. But she's got it to a point where we don't need to panic anymore. Holly, thank you so much for coming out. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's a great pleasure. Do stop back again, folks. We enjoy having you here with us on the internet. Come back anytime. We're always here. That's how the internet works.